Everyday Expertise, and I'm Angela, and I'm here today with Tabby Rose. She's the co-founder, president, and creative director at Axon Interactive, an independent studio based in Toronto that specializes in interactive media for healthcare and education, and also makes games. Their latest release is the story-driven puzzle game, Quench. Hello! Hey! <laughs> Welcome to the show! Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you. So, how did you get started in game development? Yeah, so uh, as my company description probably um, uh, intimated, I actually didn't start out in games. I started um, as a biomedical science undergraduate student at Guelph, and then I did a biomedical communications master's uh, at U of T. So I actually trained in like medical illustration, and that's my background. <laughs> Um, but while I was there, I was really interested in making educational games, and so I ended up focusing my research on um, on that, like interactive storytelling and uh, and navigation and that sort of thing, UX design, so user experience design. Um, and I made a, a little game about foodborne illness, which <laughs> didn't go anywhere and basically doesn't exist on the internet anymore. And then after I finished, um, at the time my husband was, fin or I guess he had finished an engineering degree. And uh, this was all in the 2008 to 2010 period. So as you can imagine, it was not like a great time for employment. <laughs> mm, <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, um, and so Jeff ended up going back to school for game development and we mm. decided that we were gonna try and make a go of it um, with our own business. So mm -hmm. we started out doing like web design um, and e-learning and like medical applications because that was kind of all of my like medical learning stuff because mm. that was my background. And then we decided to uh, start making a game in 2012 called mm. Quench, <laughs> which is a long time ago. <laughs> and that came out last year. So was it, was it about um, that sort of that period where employment was difficult that you decided to start your own company or, uh, rather than go work for someone else? I think I always kind of knew that I wanted to do freelance. Both my parents are self-employed and I think that might've been part of it <laughs> in completely different industries. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I thought I was going to be a doctor for a while. <laughs> and that didn't really work out for me, but I've always done art. So that's why I ended up like pivoting to medical illustration. And there's a lot of people in that field in like the biomedical communications field that are freelance. And so I think it felt relatively natural for me to, uh, mm. to, to go for that. I did, I did work for a while. I worked for um, Toronto General Hospital doing a, a medical education application for them. And, um, and I teach as well. So that's sort of my like other income stream, but uh, for the most part, yeah, we, we just decided to, to see where it went. <laughs> And then you sort of, you started out with, like you're saying, like sort of educational apps and stuff like this, and then you decided to pivot to games. Yeah. Yeah. How did you decide to do that? <laughs> so Toronto has a, a pretty vibrant, independent, like creator community here, mm -hmm. um, and kind of a history of that, because if you don't know, like sort of the history of the games industry in Canada, um, it, it tended to be that there were a lot of big companies in Montreal and a lot of big companies in Vancouver. And at the time, um, at least somewhat before when, when Jeff and I got into games, uh, there were not a lot of AAA companies. There were basically no AAA companies in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And so if anybody wanted to make games in Toronto, they kind of had to do it themselves. And so like back, you know, 10 years ago or even 15 years ago, now that ended up being a lot of like mobile development and like, Mm -hmm. and indie companies so indie games um some of those studios like uh cappy have grown into like more sort of medium sized triple i studios and some of them have become quite mobile focused and then some of them have died out and some of them are really tiny but we kind of came up at a time when there were like a lot of people like us who were kind of trying to start out um there was a conference here called gamer camp which is now defunct but a lot of us here remember it quite fondly and uh we went to that for the first time in a I think 2011 uh, until it stopped in 2014 or so. And we just started like trying to meet people and make connections. And uh, I mean, we, we were always gamers and we were always interested in doing this. So it was kind of like, we just figured we would try to make friends <laughs> and see where it went. <laughs> and, uh, and at that time, Jeff had gone back to school for game development. So we were, we were making connections in that uh, program at Humber mm. College as well. So 
Yeah. That's cool. Are there any uh, are there any games or developers that really inspired you to make your own games? Um uh well <laughs> the first game I played was Final Fantasy VII to completion. And uh and I think that and like, you know, Ocarina of Time have always been like huge inspirations for me ever since I was a little kid. I used to write as well, so that that was kind of my I don't know. <laughs> I think I always had it in my head that I would be writing games at some point. And um and more recently, like in the indie sphere, um Journey came out in 2012, and I think that was like a pretty big inspiration for me at the time, mm -hmm. and for a lot of the stuff that we were doing. And I mean, now there's like so much. I'm inspired by so many of my friends and so many, um, you know, there's there's things coming out every day. So, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I'm into the aesthetics and the story. So, uh, Okami, cool. that was the other big one for Quench. Oh, yeah. Anyway, Okami mm -hmm. was a a big influence for me. That's like a Zelda like but with a wolf and drawing. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So on to Quench. Uh, can you describe Quench for someone who's never seen it? Uh, yeah. So, oh, I mean, our pitch for it is that it's a, it's a story-based um, game where you're guiding, protecting herds of animals. Um, you can control the weather and the environment around your herds and you start with elephants so it's around elephant herds mainly um and they kind of travel on their own it's it's played out like top down on like a hex based grid so you can mm -hmm. you can see all these things out in front of you but it's got this really like mosaical atmospheric like colorful style um and low poly so it doesn't really it like it kind of blends like a naturalistic and a more geometric look. Yeah. Yeah, it's very pretty. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. And it's also um, it's kid friendly. It's nonviolent. We wanted to make something that would um, kind of make you think and tell a story, and so it's got a lot of environmental themes. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. What's your biggest hope for the game? Uh, well, I mean, a bunch of my biggest hopes were already, <laughs> were already fulfilled. It came out on Nintendo Switch, which was like a pretty big deal for us considering it's our first game. Um, it was successful on Kickstarter, which was also, uh, uh quite a big deal for us. That was mm -hmm. back in 2015, I want to say, mm -hmm. 2016. I, I think it might remember. be 2016. 2016, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and both of those were things that we did not think think we're gonna happen with our first title and um and luckily they did so actually a lot of my dreams already kind of came true <laughs> um yeah that's awesome yeah well then on that subject then uh the game is shipped yeah how has your experience been so far how's the reception been uh, reception is pretty good. Okay, so given that it's our first game, we've definitely like had some technical challenges, and some of those things have come out in reviews. And that's like, you know, what can mm -hmm. we do? It was it was um, an attempt born from a group of people who mostly like the core team of people had never made a game before, and so this was uh, the whole thing was a learning experience for us. Um, mm -hmm. We we did work with quite a few other like outside contractors who who uh, have made lots of games. So we had lots of mentorship and help and lots of friends along the way. Um, but yeah, in terms of Jeff and I, this was like a, a huge undertaking for us. So mm -hmm. reception being good, like people loving the art style and the story, that's like super important to me. I love watching kids play it at events um, or couples or like really anyone. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been interesting seeing the whole post-launch experience because so for a lot of game developers, like there's a lot of people who have a game in development, but it's not out yet. And th mm. there's like a whole other cycle of things that you have to do um, after it comes out and in order to maintain like the life cycle of the game and like kind of the business end of it. But other stuff too. There's technical stuff as well uh, that they don't really like tell you about at all. <laughs> I think your friends got to try to warn you, but there's like there's like a lot of um, additional steps, and so it's been interesting learning kind of the second half of that of like, okay, we have a game, we have a title now, but people you know are kind of coming to know about us. So now, what can we do with that? Like, what can we do with our second game to make sure that it's successful, and how can we make sure that like 
we maintain this um, like community and fan base that we've you know created now over all these years. So that's pretty interesting. <laughs> no, I imagine, yeah. I mean, uh, you on top of it, you you released on Nintendo Switch, which means you had to go through the whole sort of Nintendo certificate like validation process. Yeah, yeah, which was like its whole own thing. I I, I attended like separate training for it actually, so that I could make sure that you, I didn't you make have to. Yeah, you you yeah. really have to with them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it went okay, luckily. I think I think we got through pretty quickly. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. So, um, as you, you sort of, you mentioned, uh, around the beginning there, you're a UX designer. Yes. Yeah. What about UX design appeals to you and, uh, informs how you approach other parts of your work? Hmm, that's interesting. So, um, yeah, so I learned some UX design in school and, in, and the project that I'm working on now is with, um, another studio called Muddy Yellow. I'm the lead UX designer for their game. So I'm working on the big con right now. That's been its whole own adventure. <laughs> um, working in a role that's like just that one and not the whole rest mm. of the company is like quite freeing. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> um, but okay, so the whole thing about user experience is that you're trying to put yourself into the shoes of your player and your audience. Um, mm. I think the biggest thing that that sort of translates into for me, or one of the things that I care about a lot is uh, making sure that I'm an advocate for accessibility on the team. Mm. And so um, with the game that I'm working on now, actually I just spent like the past a uh, couple of days like putting together an accessibility report for, for the team to figure out ways that we can make sure that um, the game can be like completely played and enjoyed by like anybody with um, mm. with any kind of, you know, reason that they they wouldn't be able to uh, reasonably enjoy what we made for them already, right? Uh -huh. So we're we're uh, going back in and we're trying to find the places where we can like simplify controls or allow um, allow customization to m more than beyond difficulty level, like like individual parts of the game, so that we can say like, oh, you know, if this if this particular mechanic is causing you trouble, you know it doesn't matter that much you can you can like turn that down or you can skip it and like get ahead into the story parts which are the parts that we really want you to enjoy right hmm. um so that's been a, a pretty interesting like recent task for me but overall my job is to be an, um, sort of an advocate for the player so in my communications with the rest of the team i'm always trying to think about like ways that we can make things easy for people to understand um coming from like the web background that I did navigation mm -hmm. design is super important to me. So I'm oh, always, yeah. I'm always thinking about the ways that we are placing things on the screen so that people can find them, making sure they're not too small, <laughs> making sure they're not <laughs> hidden behind lots of menus. We're talking about like the flow of, you know, the experience through all of the different screens and through the, the game in general. And, um, yeah, that goes through to everything. So UX design, I think, is a branch of game design. It does deal mostly with like the UI and interface elements, mm -hmm. um, but it goes beyond that as well. So we're trying to design tutorials in a way that like you're just playing the game and you're not, you know, reading something <laughs> too much. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it it does like bleed out into other areas. It can bleed out into narrative a little bit. It can bleed out into game design. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely bleeds out into the art and, and aesthetic, right? You have to make sure that you're taking that into account as well. So oh, yeah. it's pretty all-encompassing. I really like <laughs> it. I love systems design. So <laughs> anything that lets me think about the big picture is, makes me happy. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's something you wish you'd known about game development and the game industry before starting? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, Anything surprise you? <laughs> I feel like I had a lot of mentorship and I felt like I was prepared for a lot of the challenges, but then when I actually like experienced them, there's only so much that you can be told in advance, right? Mm. Some things that I struggled with, um, I went through burnout a couple of times, once after we did our crowdfunding campaign and then I think again, like close to the completion of our game and um, mm -hmm. that really slowed things down for me personally because I was recovering 
And I think going into the next game, you know, one thing that's really important for me to not repeat as a mistake is to, uh, like really watch my time management there, not take mm -hmm. on too much. Um, I wore a lot of hats for quench. I did a lot of different like tasks for that game. And I think, mm -hmm. I think that was in the end to the detriment of the project to some degree, you know, I don't know that it necessarily supported my team as, as best it could. And it definitely wasn't good for me personally. <laughs> so, so if I had to tell any, anybody, uh, it would be to get help, like to just ask for help when you need it and, mm -hmm. um, and try to split roles as much as possible and not take on too much. Yeah. I know that that's hard. Sense. It's hard when you're in Indian and yeah. you don't have any money, but it's still like, it's, it's way better to preserve your health and your mental health than to make the game come up faster. Like I'll, I'll, uh, I don't want to push myself in that way again. So mm -hmm. no, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you guys uh, have to deal with crunch uh, while yeah. you were making the game? Yeah, but self imposed. Like it's not you know there's not really a publisher or anybody really bearing down on us that way. Because we have deadlines, like we have internal deadlines and milestones and all mm -hmm. the rest of it. And actually, what happened a lot is we would have an event coming up, and we would always want to have like a new thing for the event mm. so we would be like crunching to get stuff into the build to show and um i don't think i would do that again either i i definitely have heard advice since then that you should just like just make something that is good and then use mm. it for years and it doesn't matter if things are like internally getting better and better in the game just like <laughs> like I look at Night in the Woods, used the same demo for like five years or something, <laughs> and it was fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so, yeah, but we did have to, we, we had to do like quite a few periods of crunch, and especially coming into the end of the game, Jeff and I were uh, working quite long hours to make sure that it came out in a reasonable time, so... It took a while to recover from that for sure. <laughs> and I definitely like yeah, I for a while I just wasn't ready to make another game. Like I, mm. I we haven't um quite started production on the second one yet, although we like we have the concept for it. Uh and I think for a while we were just like, let's just work on other projects for a while. <laughs> it'll be it'll be a nice break. <laughs> so unfortunately. Well, how, do you, how do you cope with stress? Uh when, when, when you're working? Uh, well, I started therapy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly. That, I mean, that makes sense. No, no. Yeah. And it's still actually something it's that I... It's a good thing to do, yeah. I'm laughing about it, but I want people to know, like, it's really good. <laughs> you should do it if you have the means. Um, and are in a place where, where that will work for you. Because I do find, like, even, like, you know, now I feel pretty good, but I still go to therapy and I still like the the maintenance mm -hmm. of being able to like bring something to a person that is not you know going to be burdened by my <laughs> my stories um but beyond that uh if uh if we were really burned out we would just have to take time off but ideally you don't want to get to that place you want to get to a place where your time management is good you're spending like a decent amount of time every day on a decent number of tasks and uh and you're taking breaks regularly. So I actually take weekends now, which I didn't for like most of development. And I have to say, <laughs> at the age of 35, I've now learned, yeah, weekends are essential. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need that. Um, and uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure that we necessarily dealt with it in the best way, but you know, talking to others who are going through the same thing is going to be important. I, I do have friends, like business friends that um, that I talk to about those pro problems specifically, like the problems that we have as people who wear a lot of hats and, and we can kind of commiserate. And I think it's important to have like a network of people that can listen and share. And yeah, that's good too. So <laughs> a few no, strategies. Good. Try to share the burden, I guess, a little mm -hmm. bit. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Yeah. That's the, that's, I think, yeah, I mean, that's definitely, if you've got that sort of that close group of people that you can just sort of, like you said, commiserate with, yeah, that's important. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not to the point where you're like, you know, dumping on them, but if it's something where you've all consented to like sharing a problem in like a specific time span, I think it's good. Yeah. <laughs>
And we used to do that in person, which we can't do anymore. And that sucks. Like, that's yeah. really hard. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's all going to be Zoom commiseration now. <laughs> yeah, Zoom yeah. Discord. Yeah. <laughs> Not as fun. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have a favorite aspect of making games? Oh, I mean, design has got to be the most fun part, right? <laughs> design was uh, like the early part, <clears throat> excuse me, was um, it's exhilarating because you're making something new and you don't know exactly what it's going to be and you get to like put all your ideas into it. And it's only later when you realize that you don't have the budget or the time or the mental space for all those ideas you have to cut them <laughs> but actually i didn't mind the cutting part either because that made things feel more and that's part of design too is like yeah. um the iteration and then the the elegance building i guess like right. paring it down to its essence i don't mind that either i actually really like ux design and ui design um so the work that i'm doing on the the other game that i'm working on right now is like super enjoyable to me because i get to take everything from um, like I do mock-ups in Adobe XD, so I get to take it just like down to the bones of like, this is the wireframe of what it's going to be. And here's the flow and here's the interaction. And then, um, I do the technical side as well. So I get to take that into unity and then actually build it and code it and mm -hmm. see it work even game. And that's really satisfying. <laughs> what I didn't like so much, I don't know if this is going to be your next question, but, uh, um, I'm finding that the business administration part of it is tough marketing part's tough yeah and uh I, and while i like seeing it done i'm i'm, I'm struggling with doing it myself at times so <laughs> no that makes sense yeah no actually you know what that was that was gonna be my next question is literally like what is your least favorite aspect of game making and that would yeah. probably yeah i think for a lot of people it's business administration i don't think it was when i was in it we were traveling like a lot to do like mm -hmm. shows and stuff like that and i did enjoy that all the way up until the pandemic it's <laughs> canceled gdc on me um yeah. but now that i've had like a year at home i'm kind of like oh man that was hard work like that was exhausting and i hadn't had a vacation in like i don't know like four years or something because every time we went away we'd be like oh well we're in san francisco i guess we'll like take you know two days while we're here but it's all business like it's all it's a big business business just takes over everything and um and I tire of that a little. <laughs> it's less fun. I don't mind the accounting and stuff, but you know, I don't love the meetings. <laughs> and the pitching. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Are you uh are you like a, a beginning, middle, or end person? Because I find a lot of a lot mm. of game designers, they either love the beginning of a project, yeah, they like that sort of middle part. Or they really love the end where they're just like tying up loose ends and, and everything coming it out together. There, you know. Okay. I don't know if this is unpopular or not. I think I'm probably a middle person. <laughs> <laughs> not the part where you have no budget, but <laughs> the part where you're just working on things that you know have to get done and things are getting mm -hmm. done. Like I feel like on the big con. I'm in the middle right now because we're like designing a feature and implementing a feature and you get to see like this whole cycle. Yeah. And every week I get to see what all of the other, you know, team members are doing and all the ways that it's coming together. I don't know. Maybe we are a little closer to the end, but it feels, uh, it feels really satisfying to just see yeah. things made. So maybe I like production a lot. I think beginning is like exciting, but it's also scary and, I have a really hard time starting things, <laughs> like starting tasks. And so I think the beginning is like not where I sit so much. And the end, I mean, for this past project, I was just exhausted. Like I just mm. wanted it over with, <laughs> to be honest. So I think the middle where you're still like, you've got some, <laughs> some like uh, motivation to continue. That's probably the sweet spot. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah. yeah. So I think we've we've talked about quite a few things, but do you have any advice for people starting out in uh, indie development? Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I think they a lot of people have probably heard this a lot, but like, don't quit your day job right away. Like, it's really hard. Our game is not really like made us money per se. <laughs> like, it's out there and it's a good portfolio piece. Um, and it, like I said, it was critically like well received and we got a couple of awards and stuff but like 
I'm not like living on the sales of this game or anything. Um, mm -hmm. And it definitely took more to produce than it has made back. We had funding, so it was, you know, it's a little mm -hmm. give and take there. But uh, I did at some point quit my day job, although I still teach. <laughs> and most of my friends still teach. And so like we all have supplementary income, but like keep some kind of income stream, keep something in your mm -hmm. back pocket. We did freelance for a while. Like I said, we did the the website stuff and the e-learning. Um, but that does slow you down too. So in some ways, I think it's good to have like at least like a part-time day job and then and then a part-time this if you can swing it, which I know not everyone can. I was I was lucky to be able to like kind of scale down my actual like employment work while I was doing this um, at the beginning until we like went fully corporate. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just I I it's a it's a increasingly a pretty crowded market and I don't mm -hmm. want to see people like thinking that it's really exciting and then and getting hurt or losing all their money <laughs> so just take it one step at a time it's okay you don't have to announce anything you can make the thing in secret <laughs> on your own time you know that's true yeah and, and start small I guess that's the other thing start yeah. start way smaller than we started <laughs> don't get a huge government grant that you then have to live up to <laughs> just make something that's like minimally good and release that and then move on <laughs> yeah oh that's all good advice yeah i hope so mm -hmm. so what's up next for you and axon interactive uh yeah so we are starting to concept our second game and uh I'm not saying anything about it yet but i am very excited about it mm -hmm. <laughs> and in the meantime i'm also like personally working on um, a couple of other projects with um, with other studios, uh, which mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying, and the games are going to be so good. <laughs> the Big Con, which is the, the game that I'm doing UX for, is coming out um, on the new Xbox next year, and I'm mm -hmm. super hyped for everybody to play it. <laughs> um, but yeah, secrets. It's secrets. More to come. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And how can people find out more about you and your studio? Uh, you can follow me at Tabby Rose on Twitter. It's mm -hmm. probably the best way to get at me. And uh, my studio is Axon Interactive. The game is Quench Game at Quench Game. And, um, and the website for the game is quenchgame.com. Cool. And we'll have uh, links to all this in the description below. So Gotta check that out. <laughs> Thank you, Tabby. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been Everyday Expertise. Bye. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this interview. Be sure to share this video with friends and colleagues who may also enjoy this topic. Let us know your thoughts by leaving a comment below or check the description for our social media. See you next time.